So you got yourself a brand new Amazon Fire Stick or Fire TV or Cube or the Fire Stick Lite and you're just wondering what are some of the essential settings that you need to turn off to ensure that there's no data monitoring, data logging, just so you can minimize what Amazon are doing in terms of tracking. The next thing you want to know is how you can fully optimize your device just to make sure that it runs with the best possible performance. And lastly, you're wondering how you can get the best streaming applications, really just to get the most from your device. Well, on your new device, once you've logged in, the first thing I recommend is just go over to the settings cog, which is the last one here. Let's click on that. Now, the first thing we can look at is the notifications. And as you start installing applications on your device, some of them will have these notifications here. Now you can read the notifications or you can press the context key on the remote, which is one with the three lines. You can press that once and you can quickly dismiss all of these background notifications. Now we can also customize which applications are allowed to send you notifications, which I will show you in just a second. The next thing you want to double check is your network settings. So if we click on that, here you can quickly see which wireless network you're currently joined to. But what you can also quickly do is to run a speed test directly from this application. So if you press on the play button, which is the one here, you can see you have the option to run a speed test. Now, the reason why this is important is as you start installing your streaming applications, some of them, maybe the third party ones, you may notice that they are regularly buffering or you're getting choppy playback. Now, instead of actually looking at the application, the issue could be your home wireless network. And depending on how far your device is from the router or router will definitely affect your wireless speed. So if I do a quick speed test, I mean, I'm at least one floor away from our home router or router, but we can see on my device, I can comfortably push over 200 meg downstream. So with that kind of bandwidth, even 8K streaming shouldn't be a problem. So this is a quick way for you to confirm, does your device, your Fire Stick, your Fire TV have enough bandwidth so you can enjoy your streaming content? Let's back out of that. Let's now go into the preferences and let's start with the parental control. So depending on the setup in your house, you may optionally choose to turn this on. And what that means is once you've set a pin code for you to make any changes on your device to install applications or to access certain content, you will be prompted for this pin code. So a great way for you to lock out certain content and just make sure that if you are sharing the Fire Stick with younger kids, they won't be able to do anything on your device without this pin code. So let's back out of that. Now privacy settings is where it gets a bit interesting. So let's click on that. Now we can see by default, the device usage data is set to on. And what this means is if we look at the blurb there, use personal data collected by the operating system of this device for marketing and product improvement purposes. Now, I personally don't want anybody to collect any kind of marketing data from me or usage data. So I will quickly turn that off. It tries to um, give you a warning, but Amazon, no thanks. Let's turn that off. Again, app usage data. Now, sometimes people get slightly confused here that if you install a third party application, are they able to collect data on that? And the answer to that is no. These are only for official applications that you download directly from the Amazon App Store. But again, I want to minimize any kind of data collection, data usage monitoring. So again, I will just turn this off. And this is one of the key things that you'll realize that as you turn more and more of these background processes off, these data collection processes, you'll actually end up having a faster device. Now, again, for the interest-based ads, I don't want to have any interest-based adverts. I'm going to turn that off. Now, you will still see ads on the home screen, but they won't be personalized for you. So I'm happy with that. Let's back out of that. Now, data usage monitoring, let's click on that again. Now, data usage monitoring, you can actually leave on because it will allow you to collect data on your device that you can then see, are there any background applications consuming large amounts of data? And also based on that data usage, you can specify that for Amazon Prime, how good you want the video quality to be. So if you do have data limits or data capacity limits, you may want to turn the quality down. But if you have unlimited broadband, unlimited internet, I've set mine to best. I'm not gonna set an alert. 
and in the monthly top data usage, we can see on my device, the aerial views, which is a screen server application, consumed 25 gigs of data in the last month. This one had 22 gigs, 13 gigs, and so on and so forth. So just for your own knowledge and understanding that if you want to monitor what's happening on your device in terms of data consumption, you can also leave this option on. But again, if you are somebody that wants to minimize any kind of data monitoring, whether it's for your use or Amazon's use, you can one click, turn that off. I'll leave mine on. Let's go back. And here's the notification settings that I previously mentioned. So here, for example, you can enable do not interrupt. And this means that you won't see any pop-ups from any applications giving you a notification whilst you are watching something. So if you want to ensure that your device doesn't interrupt you, you can leave that option as on. And if you're looking for more of a granular control that you want certain applications to be able to send you a notification, but other applications should be completely disabled, the app notifications, you can go in here and say, for example, I don't want to see any notifications from aerial views, but I'm happy to see notifications from all four or these other applications. So that is completely up to you. Let's go back. Now, featured content is quite interesting if you want to see those large sponsored videos, especially the videos that have background audio. If I just press the home key, just so you guys can see, so those things at the top, if you give it a second, yeah, they start playing very loud audio trailers. So, I mean, it takes up a large portion of the screen. So I personally don't want to have that on. So I would again, go back into settings, go to preferences and the setting is called featured content. So if I click on that, I can say, I don't want those videos to auto play. And I definitely don't want to have any audio. So both those options on my device have now been turned to off. Let's go back. Now, if we go over to MiFi TV. Now, probably one of the first things you may want to do on your new device is sideload applications. And a key part of sideloading is to enable the ability to install applications from unknown sources. And the way you do that is if you go to developer options, and if you can't see developer options, which is a recent change that Amazon made, you can go to about, let's press the select button there. And where it says the name of your Fire Stick, we can see this is the Fire Stick 4K Max. If we just press the select button seven times, so one, two, and you'll see at the bottom when you're doing it on your device for the first time, you'll see a countdown that, you know, four steps, three steps, and eventually it will say you are now a developer. And what that just means is when you press the back button, you'll now see these developer options. So you can now click on that. Now the first option is something that you may want to enable if you want to use certain applications. Maybe you want to push applications from your computer to your Fire Stick. But for most of you who just want to install applications from third party sources like my website or other places, you want to click on install unknown apps. And here you want to turn on whichever application is allowed to install those applications. So if you're going to use downloader to install apps, make sure downloader is set to on. If you're going to use a Mi Explorer, another file manager, you can turn that on. And it means now any applications that you click on through this application, you get the option to install them straight away. Let's press back. Now, the other thing you want to do in about is go down to check for updates. Now, when Amazon make changes to the devices, when they add in new features, maybe there's bug fixes or security updates, all of those are sent to your device through these software updates. And the way you check to see, have I got the latest version is if you click on check for updates, now you can see on my device, it says that your Fire TV is up to date, but on your device, especially if it's a new one, you may find that there's many updates pending in the queue. And this way, installing them, you'll make sure you have those latest updates, latest features. Let's press back. So those are pretty much all of the settings that I will turn off or customize on a brand new Fire Stick. The next one is, what's the quickest way I can speed up my device? Now, the easiest way to do that is to kill or stop these background running processes because as I've mentioned before, the more things that are running in the background, the slower or sluggish your device will become, especially on these Fire Sticks and you know these lower power devices where they don't have much RAM. If you do have a couple of things running in the background, your device will start running slowly. Now, the quickest way to fix that is to click on an application called the Background Fast Task Killer. Now, if you get Downloader, which is available directly from the Amazon App Store, 
you can type in this quick code, which is just 124712. And this will take you directly to a page on my website, which has this application that you can use. This application works great on all of your Amazon devices, your Fire TV cubes, your Fire Stick lights, your 4K Fire Stick Maxes, any Amazon device. You can navigate to this page, scroll to the bottom. You can see some step-by-step -step instructions, but essentially what you're looking for is just one link, which is this thing here. You click on that once, you scroll down, and you're looking for this green download button, which is this one here. You click on that, it's a very small application, just over one meg. You click on install. Once it's installed, you can go back to your home screen. Now before I click on that, because it literally is just one click, we can also see how much memory is currently being used on your Amazon device. And the easiest way to do that is to run an application called the developer tools menu. So if you just go to your search and type in DEV, you'll see you have the developer options. Click on that and you're looking for this developer tools menu. I can click on that and it brings up this menu here. And all you want to do is just turn on the system X-ray. When I turn that on, we can now see in the background, in that box there, that my device currently has 450 megs of free memory. So that's not too bad. I did recently reboot my device, but we can see that's available on my device right now. But watch what happens when I now click on this fast task killer. So we're on 415 and we're now gonna press the select button once on the fast task killer. One click and we can see we've now almost doubled that to 900 megs of free memory. So, and this is why I recommend everybody install the application because it's super easy to use, it takes one click and you can quickly go ahead and stop those background running tasks, which then in turn means you'll have a faster, more snappier running device. So that's something that I'll recommend. Now the last one is slightly tricky because of YouTube's rules and policies. Let's just say that if you want to get the best streaming applications for the best content, I will leave a link for you in the pinned comment. Click on that video, you'll get the step-by-step -step instructions, how you can install all of those completely free streaming applications so you can watch the best content on your Amazon device. And if you are going to be using those third-party streaming applications, then I personally would recommend using a VPN when running those apps. IPVanish is a VPN that I personally recommend. Right now, they are doing a crazy promotion whereby you can get complete protection for unlimited devices at really fast speeds with confirmed zero data logging at just over $3 a month. So really at that price point to get total protection, to protect your privacy, to change your IP address, to make sure that nobody can watch what you're doing online, I think it's definitely worthwhile checking out. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Many thanks for watching. I'll be doing some more Fire Stick tips and tricks tutorials in the next few days, as I know lots of you have got some new devices. So if you are interested in that kind of content, make sure you are subscribed with all notifications and I'll hopefully catch up with you guys real soon. Thanks.